What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're going to be going over the settings and places that you might need to look at in your 4K capture utility. All right, guys, first things first, we're going to open up the 4K capture utility. If you don't already have this installed, we made a quick, simple video. We're going to open this up and I currently have my uh, Series X on right now. So today we're just basically going to be going over all the information that you need to know about the 4K capture utility. So the first page right here that's going to pop up is your actual capture. So on my Xbox right now, you guys can see everything is working great. Everything is all good. So that's probably the first thing that you want to make sure that is okay. So that's going to be your capture tab here. We also have a library tab where all of your recordings will go. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Now on the top, this is going to be your source. So we are uh, seeing 4K, but we're recording in 1080p. Uh, that is one of the features that comes along with the uh, HD 60X. So that's good and everything. And then we can see how much free space we have up here on our hard drive. Uh, we also have our settings here, which we'll go over here in a bit. And then down at the bottom here, the most important thing to me is this gray bar. This is your flashback recording bar and you can customize how long you can record without actually having to record. You see, uh, the 4K capture utility is always recording in the background for a set amount of time. That way, even if you forget to record something, you can go back in time and simply press the record button and uh, be able to record something that you might have missed. Now, we'll make a short video on that at some other point, but the important thing to know about this is that if you do miss something, if you have this enabled the right way, you can simply click on the dot over here and drag it back and go back in time. This is a minute and 32 seconds ago. And then if you want to go back to what's actually happening on screen, you see this is what we did at the beginning of the video. But then to go back to where you're actually at, you can just click on live. And now everything is back to where we're at right now. Now here at the bottom, this is going to be some of the information that you may want to put whenever you're actually fixing to record stuff. So uh, you can put some tags here if you want. This will help you uh, organize your videos and stuff like that. Uh, usually I don't use tags unless I'm recording like a specific game. Under game here, you can put whatever game you're playing. I'm currently playing through Far Changing Tides, a fantastic indie game if you guys want to go and check it out. And then you can put your titles on here as well. Once you're done with that, you can hit save. Uh, here's your pause. So once again, if you click on that, that's going to pause right where we stopped. And again, that's going to be affecting your flashback recording. In order to go live once again to where you're at right now, you just click on live. And then obviously, if you want to start recording, you click on the red dot there. You can also take some screenshots. Uh, these will usually go to your desktop, though you can change where you want those to go. Um, I'll just jump in here real quick and we'll just take a quick screenshot. And that's going to be on my desktop, which we can see right here. So I think this can be helpful in case you're trying to find a thumbnail for your videos or whatever the case is, you can use the snapshot in order to capture a specific scene in your gameplay. All right, so if we go back here, what else do we have here? We have our microphone, which right now is not on uh, because I am using it to record, but if you do want to turn it on, you can do that. And this will always be recording as well. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off right now though. And then this is your sound. So right now you may not be able to hear what's going on, but if we click on this, you can hear it through the speakers. So once we're done with that, uh, that's everything that you have on your capture screen. From here, we can go to library. And then of course, this is going to be your library. Things are organized on the left-hand side here. We have every video that we have recorded on the software right now, right there. Uh, things that I used for flashback, you can check that out right there. Uh, this was probably during our live stream when I forgot to record. I simply went back with the flashback recording, pressed record and was able to capture stuff that I forgot to record during the live stream. Then you've got your organization here through games. So once again, we're playing through Grand Theft Auto 4. We've got a couple of Infinity Nikki videos. And again, I'm playing through Far Changing Tides on my own time. After that, you've got tags. Now I always forget to take these off. So these are just pretty much every video that I've had to record. 
And then you do have smart folders, and this will be stuff that is recorded in 4K, long 4K videos, short videos, or small videos, whatever that is. That's just like a, a smart thing that it does on its own. So of course you can uh, try to minimize these if you want to. Uh, usually I leave the games because that's how I organize my stuff. And then of course you can sort by things here. Usually I just do mine by date. It's just a lot easier that way. And then additionally here on the top, you can change the view. So you can have them in a grid view like we have now or in a list view. Personally, I like the grid view. And I think that's all that we need to know about the library. Basically your library is going to be where everything is recorded, right? And then the last thing that we need to go over on this video is going to be your settings. So we'll start off with the first tab. We got general here. Now, if you want to enable stream link, uh, this is what I use so that whenever I'm streaming, I can still be able to record gameplay without any overlays, without my face cam, without my mic audio. It just captures the gameplay. And this is a good thing that you can use so that if you ever need to make other videos, if you want to make tutorials, if you want to make guides, you can have the raw footage of your gameplay without having to be interrupted by your audio, your face cam, any overlays that pop up during your stream. It's a really nice feature, and this is what I use whenever I'm streaming. Of course, you want to have this checked uh, to automatically check for updates, so that's always good. And that's pretty much all you need to know under general. And then under your device here, it's going to show you what capture card you have the firmware, uh, what it is that your video is is inputting or outputting, I guess. So again, I'm playing in 4K, but it's recording in 1080p. Uh, usually you won't have to change your audio input. You can leave it on HDMI unless you're trying to capture game chat as well as the game on PlayStation. If you're doing that, you're gonna wanna have a PlayStation chat link as well as change this to analog audio. But in most cases, if you're just trying to record what you see on screen, HDMI audio is going to be fine. Your HDMI color range, uh, this should be fine. There are other options. I find bypass to be perfectly fine. And then uh, the same thing for these. These just work for me. So this is going to be display and default. So that's all that we need there. Under picture, this is where you can change what you actually see on screen. So let me go back to the actual live capture here. We're gonna open this up. And under picture, this is where you can make adjustments for your recordings if you need to. Uh, personally, this looks exactly like what I'm seeing on my screen, except my screen is 4K, this is in 1080p. But if you need to adjust your brightness, you can do things like that. I find for me, in my case, um, it's worked perfectly fine just being in the center. Although if you want to adjust things to stylize it in your own way, you can definitely do that. So that's really up to you. And then we've got your recordings in the next tab. Now this is going to choose where your recordings are located, uh, where your screenshots go, and then what it is that you're using. Now I'm just using the automatic one. It seems to work for me. I don't have the best graphics card as you guys can see. I've just got a GTX 1660 Ti, nothing special or anything like that, but it works just fine. Uh, if you want to enable HDR recording, you've got that and the format that you're going to be recording in. Now you could record higher. So the way I have it is a little bit weird. Uh, the way I game, I'm a console gamer. So my TV is a 4K TV, but my monitors are 1080p. So even if I wanted to see 4K, I couldn't on my monitor. So I just leave the output at 1080p, 60 FPS. After that, you can choose uh, the bitrate that you want to output. The more bitrate that you use to record, the bigger your files are going to be. Uh, I found mine to work perfectly fine, uh, even at 8.6, but I try to leave it at 10, and that gives me about four gigabytes per hour of recording. Now, if you want to, you can reduce the preview frame rate while you're recording, and that's gonna make things look weird. Uh, if you have a strong enough PC to be able to see things live as they happen, then I would leave this off. Uh, this seems to work for me, but if your PC starts to slow down or if it starts to bog down or anything, you can go ahead and click this and that will reduce the frame rate of what you're seeing whenever you're recording on the software over here. And then here's flashback recording. Now, if you turn this off, I would not recommend this, but if you do turn this off and apply that, you're not going to have a way to have flashback recording. And I think this is one of the best features of this software. So I always leave this on. And usually I leave it at the two hour mark. I don't think you'd have to record more than two hours 
uh, of anything. But if for some reason you feel like you need more time, you can change this all the way up to four hours or minimize it all the way down to five minutes. I feel like the two hour mark is perfectly fine. So we're gonna leave that there, apply that. And then the very last thing that we have on these settings for the 4K capture utility is your microphone. And you guys can see that I'm talking right now. Uh, you've got your default stuff here. You can choose whatever it is that you need. I'm using a Blue Yeti mic. So we're gonna leave it there. And I would actually leave this at 100%. Um, I know some people have issues with that. If you guys have any questions or if you want to let me know your issues, uh, put them in the comments and I will address them as best as I can. But if you are actually trying to record your audio, uh, you want to have that up because your gameplay audio is going to be loud as well. And you're going to need to adjust that in post. So I would always leave this at 100% and then adjust it after the fact. I do think I'll have some shorter videos showing how everything works just in case you need it. But that is everything that you need to know about the 4K capture utility, which once again is the software that you would use with pretty much any Elgato capture card that you'll be using for your console gaming, whether that's on Xbox, PlayStation or Switch. So again, if you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments and I would love to help you guys out as best as I can. But with that said, as always, I will see you on the next video.